Hey, this is Rob from Brilliant Prep, coming at you with the first in our new series, Tips for High Scorers. This series is dedicated to students who you know, want to get one of those top-level scores, who are really reaching for that 1,400 plus, and for students who are already at that top level, you know, 1,450, 1,500, who really want to get to that that upper elite echelon level score. So uh, today's video is going to be about SAT math. And we're going to focus on a particular question type that will appear usually to the medium difficult part of the test. That's actually not too bad as long as you don't fall for the trap. So let's start with the question on the left. We'll complete it. We'll do the question on the right. We'll compare and we'll talk about this, this issue, this trap. So here we've got this question. We need to solve this for X. And so it's typical radical equation. If you want, you can go ahead, pause this video, try it on your own first. Um, so go ahead and do that. And so let's solve it. The first thing we would typically do in questions like this is square both sides. So we can get rid of that square root on the left. So we'll get x plus 12 equals x squared. Let's bring everything over to one side. So move the x and the 12 over. This is equal to 0. Now we've got a quadratic. We know how to handle these. We factor x, x minus 4 plus 3. And so I get two solutions. 4 and negative 3. And uh, if this is a multiple choice question, maybe those two answers will be in one of the choices. And so perhaps you pick that and then get it wrong because something's going on. Okay, well, it's not a bad idea to try plugging these in and test them out, see if they work. So let's try 4 first. So the square root of 4 plus 12 equals negative 4. So this is the square root of 16 equals negative 4. And doesn't that work? Hmm. Well, let's look at negative 3. The square root of negative 3 plus 12 equals negative negative 3. So this is the square root of 9 equals 3. And yeah, 3 equals 3. That works. So wait a minute. What's going on? Because if you actually go to the answers here, the answer to the question will just be 3, not negative 4. Hmm. What's going on? Let's come back to that in a minute. Let's take a look at the other question. So we're going to go here. Uh, this time we're going to solve this. Again, pause the video, try it again on your own if you'd like. So we'll start by square rooting both sides to get rid of that square, to get rid of that uh, x plus 12 squared. We want to get it just down to x plus 12. And then when I square root both sides, I have to remember that I get a plus or minus here. So this is going to be plus or minus 5. And so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 12 from both sides. I'll get x is equal to negative 12 plus or minus 5. And I've got two possible solutions here then. I can either have x equals negative 12 plus 5 or negative 7. And I get over here negative 12 minus 5, and that's negative 17. And if you'd like, you can try plugging both of these in. But if you plug both of these into the original equation, it works. So both of these work. And indeed, in this question, the answer is both negative 7 and negative 17. Those are both acceptable answers. OK, so wait a minute. What's going on over here? Let's cut to the chase. The problem is that this is false. The square root of 16 is not negative 4. The square root of 16 only equals 4, which of course doesn't equal negative 4. It does not equal negative 4. Wait a minute. But over here, what's sort of confusing about this is when I square rooted both sides, I did this little plus or minus move. And so I got negative 12 plus or minus 5. And so I got two answers. Why am I not accepting a negative answer here? How come I did positive or negative 5 over here? And here, I only get positive 4. So here is the trick. Here is not really a trick. It's, like a, it's a math concept. But here's the thing that they're testing. What they're testing is let's go back to the original equation here for a minute. This symbol, which we just in our normal everyday math discussion, we call square root, it's actually got a little bit more of a specific name. It's a more specific concept than just a square root. It's called the principal square root. And the principal square root is defined as um, taking, you know, when we take the square root of a number, the principal square root only yields the positive answer. So that's why. When I take the square root of 16, I only get 4. The square root of 16, the principal square root of 16, does not equal negative 4, which is why this fails and why the answer is only 3. OK, but wait a minute. Why doesn't that hold here? I've taken a square root of both sides here. Why do I get negative 5? 
because if you look at the original problem, the original problem did not have that square root symbol in it. We ourselves and sort of the process of doing the algebra put the square root in. And for reasons why we'll get into maybe a little bit later, if you want to watch this last part later in the video, it, this sort of square root we're doing here is different from the square root as written in the equation on the paper. So here's the sort of easy way to boil this all down. When you see the square root as part of the equation, as part of something you're solving, as it was here, this means principal square root. That's what it means. It does not mean the answer can be positive or negative. It only returns the positive answer. So that's why here, when I got square root of 16, I only get four. Similarly over here, when I take the square root of nine, principal square root of nine, I only get three, but that works fine. Here, I only get four. If you yourself, in the process of doing algebra, put in the square root as like a step in the process, that will yield both the positive or negative answers, which I'll talk about the difference a little bit more in a minute. But that's just sort of the quick and dirty trick, right? The square root is there, principal square root, only positive answer. If I put the square root in myself as part of a algebraic process, that can yield both the positive or negative answers. So that's the difference. So where does this real difference come from? Without getting too technical and mathy about it, it comes down to sort of a way this principal square root has been defined. When you take the principal square root of a square, like x squared, that is defined as the absolute value of x. So when, for example, if we go back to our previous question, we had, let's actually see what that previous question was. It was the square root, uh, or it was x plus 12 squared, when I square root both sides, one way to think about this is I get the absolute value of x plus 12 equals five, right? Because you can sort of think it, we are applying sort of the principal square root here, but by definition, this becomes the absolute value of x plus 12. And if you know how to solve these absolute value equations, we solve them by solving one is just x plus 12 is five, and the other is x plus 12 equals negative five. So in some sense, we're just doing the plus or minus five thing. It's just another way of writing it. So that's why when we are introducing the square root, we're usually introducing it in situations when we are square rooting something squared. And so by that definition, we're producing the absolute value. I mean, really, when you principal square root nine, I mean, it sort of follows the same pattern. You are doing the um, absolute value of, of three, basically, is, is your answer, which is just three. Um, same thing if you did this and you said, well, okay, it's negative three, that's one of the square roots, you still get three, which is why that principal square root is always returning the positive answer. So that's the quick tip. Remember the difference between the principal square root when it's written in the equation versus when you yourself apply it. And you'll get this question right, no problem, when it appears on the SAT.